Hey, hello! Welcome back to Shop Adventures number 7. This is the journey of two best friends machining a product in the California Mojave Desert. My name is Lance, that's Patrick back behind the camera. This week's topics we're going to cover the indicator, an indicator that was from a company, ST Industries. They're located on the east coast or the opposite coast. We're on the west coast, they're on the east coast. That's the, east, the Atlantic Ocean, this is the Pacific Ocean over here. Okay. They've been in business about 70 years. I personally have never seen one of these indicators before. It came on our Mar indicator stand. It's a vintage old rounded corner, beautiful stand, the one we painted well blue. Okay, all that being said, the indicator came frozen as we had mentioned, I think, in the videos before. So to get to solve the problem as being watchmakers, one of the things we were able to do is, it's, is you're kind of trained in how to fix a dial indicator. Uh, the movement mechanism inside is pretty simple in relation to the complication of the movements of we, as we've mentioned before in a watch movement. So we find the problem, we discover it and we fix it. We're going to share that in this video. It's pretty tricky. And then, then after that we'll be building that indicator eventually. But for right now we just wanted to fix the part. And then I'm going to share with you how to use a Swiss buff rake. This thing's pretty neat and this is the only way properly to prepare a wheel for doing buffing and polishing, um, something that's really critical in the watch industry, but it's really critical in the tech, in the high high tech uh, instrument industry as well. You know things like particular components of uh, indicators and so forth. Um, okay, then what we went in, we we uh, we, we were going to install bearings or start to install bearings on two of our motors. We'll share those motors with you. What kind of bearing it was, the diameters, and so forth. We end up being forced to make a couple of tools. We were astounded to find out that the manufacturer. Uh, a very brand name manufacturer of bearing installation tools doesn't cover these small sizes. I said, wow, that's amazing. So we made a perfect set of tools to add to our kit that they'll last forever. So I hope you'll join us on this journey and let's get started, shall we? Thank you. Okay, hi. Hey, today we're out in the machine shop and we're going to do some buffing and some polishing. The problem is um, our, our, our finishing room isn't complete yet. It's a little uh, shed in the back out backyard there it's about 12 by 12 feet and uh they just haven't pulled the electric power to it yet but we've already run the conduit and we got some siding to go there so that's a project we're working on for now we do this in the machine shop the same way we were doing the bead blasting the other day okay what, what we have is i've been sanding working on this damaged uh phenolic part that is for the flume watchmaker's lathe base uh it's also known as macarta uh, if you're not familiar with that. And I'm going to have to buff and polish this after the sanding's complete here and we've fixed all the damage. But first I have to use a, a Swiss buffing rake to prep this polish, the buffing wheel and the polishing wheels. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and do that now and show you how a Swiss buffing rake works. Hey, Patrick. Hey. Okay, yeah. Uh, what I'm currently doing is I'm currently restoring the dial indicator. And the reason why we're doing it is, uh, first off, just kind of update you. This is the dial indicator that came with the dial indicator stand over here that we powder coated. This is that way old blue color we powder coated. And we're still in the process of having to assemble that again. But we first wanted to uh, fix the dial indicator. Uh, when this, this came with the dial indicator stand, and the problem with it is it was it was completely frozen. Um, it wouldn't move and it was stuck. So we took I com completely took it apart, cleaned all the comp all the parts, and when reassembling it, I ran into a problem. And the issue is how this dial indicator works is. For taking measurements, this is the main post that moves up and down. And if you can see very closely, there's gear teeth on this post. And this gear teeth is what drives the gear, the wheel right there. Okay, and so it's really important 
that this moves up and that the post moves up and down but does not turn what, um, whatsoever. Okay, and how they accomplished that was there's this rail that has a slot. Okay, and this installs right next to the to the post. Okay, and then there's this little pin that gets screwed onto the side of the post. Okay, let me set this down. Okay, so what happens? Okay, so this this little pin gets screwed into the post, and this pin uh, rides in this little slot right here. Okay, and the problem is, is the pin goes into the slot, but once it's in the slot, it won't, it's stuck, it won't move up and down. And that's really strange because at first we thought, okay, maybe it's dirty, maybe it's corroded, you know, maybe it has some surface rust. So we did everything we could think of. Because, um, you know, right away, you know, working with watches, when, you, when, you, when we service watches, you don't want to start modifying components just because they won't fit. You know, you only want to make adjustments. You want to leave everything original. Okay, so in our case, what I did was I first polished the pin and then I polished the slot. And you can see it's really shiny. I mean, under the loop, these two parts are perfect. But for some reason that we can't understand it, it it's just won't ride into the slot. So, um, since we have no other alternative, we're going to take just one uh, finished pass with the end mill and just a really light cut, probably maybe a thousandth, maybe a half a thousandth. You know, we don't want to take too much material. We only want to take enough material off just so that it slides. And we really don't want any play, you know, just very little play, but we want smooth action. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to go head over to our milling machine and we're going to go ahead and start milling it. Hey, look at Patrick. Okay, I'm back. Okay, as you saw in the prior clip, I indicated the part, so it's perfectly set on the table. Now I'm going to take one pass at one thousandth of an inch, or about 0 0.025 millimeter. Okay, here we go. Ooh, okay. look at that fancy air gun. <laughs> okay, let's test see if the pin fits. And tight. We got a really tight fit. It does slide. Oh, it's going to make for a nice and smooth indicator. Oops, I dropped it. No, but <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy, what are you doing? Oh, hey, hi. Okay, well, as you know, we're getting prepared to rebuild all of these machines and tools. And what we've come to realize is, after laying all this stuff out, and we, you know, what we're starting with, of course, we were going to start with the headstocks and start with the spindles. We decided to first rebuild the motors that are going to be used in a few of the machines. And we've come to realize that for example this is an armature 
for a Bergeon uh, tool sharpener. And this one comes from this motor for this is for this motor here. And then we have this armature, which is the for the flume uh, motor, which is made in uh, Germany. And both of them require to have new bearings put in. As you can see, we only use uh, SKF bearings. We've just found them to be the most longest lasting reliable bearing we can find. Um, that's not endorsements, just, just a lot of testing and a lot of, lot of years of running machines. Um, these particular SKF bearings, they're made in Italy. And my mother's favorite place is Italy and everything made in Italy therefore is great because my mother's Italian. Okay, well, SKF makes a tool set. Um, I have it here. Um, the problem is these bearings have to press onto these shafts, you know, up up to uh, up to two inches uh, uh, here on on these edges here and here. And this is a this is a eight millimeter and this is a seven millimeter. And we have to press them on with the internal race of the SKF bearing. And this is this is a tool for both internal and external races from from uh, SKF. And uh, the the problem is the smallest they go as you can see here on our chart, is uh, they, they, they only go down to 10 millimeter on the ID. And uh, we're not worried about concern with OD at this time. That's what the right side column means, by the way. And uh, we even use the hammer from SKF because we just think we're all that. No, it's because it was part of a kit and when we bought it, we got a deal. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to have to go out into the shop. We're gonna, fortunately for us, we have some Delrin. So we're going to take this piece of Delrin out and we're going to go make about a two inch long, we're going to make two separate ones, one at eight millimeter, one a seven millimeter. And we're going to make two of these on the lathe out in the machine shop and then we're going to come back in here and that should be good enough to press these on. You never ever want to press a bearing from the outer race when you're doing an ID installation like this is on, on an internal diameter like this. And a, or, 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 or vice versa, you don't want to push on that center section if you're doing an OD installation to say a tight hole of a of anything you can imagine. So yeah, it's real important. So the Delrin's going to save the day. I just say SKF. You, you probably got to be rich to do that, and not make the right installation tool. But that's okay. We run across hurdles, and along this assembly, uh, our whole goal is to get these machines finished, get them made, so we can start producing a product on them. We're really excited about it. Okay, thank you.
okay, hey, welcome back. Um, I'm back in from the machine shop now. Let me just reiterate what we went out to the machine shop to do. Um, you remember, we're making an SKF uh, makes a bearing installation kit. And this is the uh, post, which you can hammer on and you can use in the press, but they guarantee that, as you can see there. Okay, and this is a die that goes in it, and they make them all say, this is the number 10 millimeter die, by the way. And you basically install it, you put it on there, and you put it in your press, your hammer, whatever you're going to do. Remember, we, we couldn't go below 10 millimeter because, well, SKF doesn't make it. So we took that Delrin out in the machine shop, and this is where we made a 7 millimeter and an 8 millimeter. And then I'm going to rotate one and show you that we did put a nice chamfer. We finished up the siding really well. And you know, like you can do with the, that hollow one from SKF, our solid ones can take a press very well and you can hammer on these just as well that's why the chamfer is there to prevent you from having a problem um, we took this approach to make the tools because when we make something we'll add these to our SKF's uh, bearing installation kit because no doubt about it around here with this many machines to build to rebuild or to work on over the years um, it'll have be good to have these in the kit and we'll just add them in there and add value to the kit and it's useful forever because a I, I, I story I want to share is uh, we have another person we follow or we know or we, we know of and his problem is um, he, he went down to the local hardware store and he bought PVC pipe because it happened to have the right ID to pound his bearing in and that's probably all I'm going to want to say about that. So that, that kind of thing like that uh, you won't find around here, not that we're better or less than anything. We just, we just really take a lot of pride in what we do and we really like to share how we do what we do and you know we like to add value to our kits of our installation parts or value to a machine as we rebuild it. That's that's just us. So I um, hope you'll continue on this journey. We're really having a good time and we don't think there's any more stuff that's going to delay the assembly of all these machines. This was just a thing we forgot. We didn't realize rather when we opened the kit we didn't realize we didn't have these in our box and the 7 and the 8 millimeter. So let's go from there and let's get started assembling shall we? I can't wait to get started. Thank you. Hey, we hope you enjoyed this week's video and please don't hesitate to subscribe. And did you know we really do value getting those comments? We love to answer any question you may have for us. Thank you.